Welcome to the Chaos Sector. We return to the Matrix. Before we get started, we'd like to show our appreciation for all of the support. This is our 50th episode in the Matrix. It's been quite the journey so far. Everyone who takes the time to watch, learn, engage, we appreciate each and every one of you. So to every voice of reason, voice of truth, we here at the Chaos Sector want to thank you all. Now, with the presidential election right around the corner, I just want to review a few things. Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. This would be approximately half of the US population she referred to, by the way. But she doesn't care, out of rage, thinking that she was going to be the first woman president, lashed out at millions of Americans. Old Joe then stated that if black people didn't vote for him, as opposed to Trump, then they weren't real black people. One of the most devastating statements a politician has ever made in the history of politics. It's similar to what another Democratic politician said about the black community, that being Lyndon B. Johnson. I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. This is outrageous, but it's not seen as racist, not seen as prejudice. It's slated as some sort of, quote, Scranton middle-class folksy rhetoric. Wow. Then this year's election, we had the trio of MSNBC heathens, Joyless Reed, Rachel Madman Maddow, and Jen Sacklunch, mocking Virginia voters for claiming that immigration was a top priority. Yeah, you think just because they're not at the border, they shouldn't be concerned about immigration? What if many migrants are sent to Virginia, just like many non-border states across the US? What if they have family members who live in those border states, huh? What if they have had family members who were victims of crimes illegal immigrants committed, huh? You pieces of shits. Then in this presidential election, Joyless Reed stated that black people will look very weird if they do not vote for Kamala Harris. Basically echoing the same rhetoric of old Joe trying to shame black people into voting for an android. Then later on, she basically said if Harris loses, it will be because black and Hispanic men chose to vote for Donald Trump instead of a woman of color. Again, trying to guilt trip citizens into voting for the android. What about the Obamas? Look what garbage they've been spewing out there. Barack Obama basically told black men they aren't actually black if they don't support Kamala Harris. And he tried to disguise that nonsense by insinuating that those black men would rather vote for Trump because they aren't comfortable voting for a woman. Disgusting. And then his partner in crime spewed this same vomit out by attacking men and saying if they vote for Trump, they are putting women's lives in danger. And what about the passive aggressive lunatic in Mika Brzezinski with her crocodile tears claiming this election is a matter of life and death for women in the United States? Wow. Or what about Mark Cuban coming out and saying that Trump has never surrounded himself with smart women because he feels intimidated by them. So, he's basically calling every woman that has ever served in Trump's administration dummies. And this would also include a black woman in Omarosa, right? Mark Cuban just called a black woman a dummy. That's racist. Oh, he apologized soon after, so you know, it's not racist if you apologize. Oh, okay, I get it. Or better yet, he's endorsing Kamala Harris, so it's not racist. If he were endorsing Trump and said that about old Joe, you guessed it, the media would literally bury him alive for making a racist, sexist statement. And old Joe is sleepwalking again, claiming that Trump supporters are garbage. They tried to clean it up in saying he was referring to the specific person, but we all know he's talking about 80 plus million people in the United States. And he didn't do that any so-called justification, any justice. Because he came right back out of his senior citizen's home and claimed they should lock Trump up, and then tried to clean it up in saying, lock him up politically, which isn't changing the intention much. Old Joe wants Donald Trump to be a political prisoner. Ah, yes. They want you to think he meant lock him up metaphorically in regards to the results of the election, where Trump can't escape losing the election. That's not what he meant. Everyone knows that. If you have follow a common theme here, it would be that Democrats are quick to attack the American people because they are not voting for their party. Republicans are not insulting the American voters' intelligence like this. Perhaps behind closed doors, and well, I wouldn't blame them for having that opinion about Harris voters. But some of these are politicians who are insulting a large demographic of the American population, and they face no repercussions for it. And then there's more from psycho New York governor Kathy Hochul. Quote, Kathy Hochul calls Republican voters anti-American, ties New York GOP candidates to Trump. Governor Kathy Hochul did not mince words when describing how she feels about the New Yorkers voting for her political opponents. 
Hokul appeared on MSNBC Saturday to discuss former President Donald Trump's Madison Square Garden campaign rally last weekend and linked it to Republicans running in her state. Quote, if you're voting for these Republicans in New York, you're voting for someone who supports Donald Trump and you're anti-woman, you're anti-abortion. And basically, you're anti-American because you have just as trashed American values and what our country is all about. Oh my days, is this a real comment from this person? This can't be real, is this real? Is this coming from an actual governor of a state? Keep in mind, she didn't attack the Republicans running in the state. She attacked the voters who would vote for those Republicans. And see, that shows how despicable Democrats are. So Hoku claims that abortion is an American value. Oh, okay. Yeah, like women were running around aborting children left and right in the early 1950s. Oh, okay. Well, I guess Hoku is referring to Planned Parenthood, founded by a maniacal white woman who carried out population control in the black community. Oh yeah, that's the American values she's talking about. Don't let those values slip away. And because they're anti-abortion, which is about the life of a human being, somehow these voters are anti-woman. And because of this, they're anti-American, because they do not align with the American values of sucking human lives out of a woman's womb. Oh, okay. How dare they be against those American values? It's heresy. These people are maniacs. They are the ones that actually need to be imprisoned. Let's continue before I blow a fuse. Quote, her pronouncement immediately drew outrage from New York Republicans who objected to Hokul, questioning the patriotism of Trump voters. They connected it to President Joe Biden's recent remarks that Trump supporters are garbage, a comment the former president immediately embraced on the campaign trail. That's not the way to phrase that. It should say, a comment the former president immediately exposed on the campaign trail. But left-leaning mainstream media will slide the article to make it seem as if Trump is not taking it seriously, more so than proving a point about how old Joe insults the American people. Anyhow, New York State Representative Elise Stefanik also tied Hoku's statement to businessman Mark Cuban's claim that Trump does not surround. Okay, wait. They are phrasing things in a biased manner. You should not treat Cuban's statement as a claim. You treat it as a statement. If you present it as a claim, then you're giving that claim unwarranted logic and even proof in the reader's subconscious. Because it's painting a scenario where Cuban has evaluated these women and has proof of this claim, when clearly he doesn't. If he did, he would have given a list of women in the Trump administration or women involved that were not intelligent or, or strong, you understand. Is he calling Kaylee McEnany a weak and stupid woman? Well, she sure handled the press quite well and even blasted wackos on CNN in panel debates. What about Kellyanne Conway? Are you claiming that she is a weak and stupid woman? Well, she sure handles herself pretty well in debates with the opposition, has great political insight and analysis as a political consultant, and definitely is not afraid to speak her mind. So it's neither of these women. What about his own daughter, Ivanka Trump? Is Mark Cuban calling her a weak and stupid woman? Well, she isn't in the spotlight much, but uh, she's a chip off the old block, I might say. She was an executive vice president of development and acquisitions in the Trump organization, responsible for domestic and global expansion of the company's real estate interests. Dealing with domestic and global business, you have to be strong and intelligent. What women are Cuban referring to? Even Omarosa, who had a sour split from the Trump administration, was a political aide named director of African American outreach, and went on to become the director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison. Who is he talking about? No one. He's trying to convince women to not vote for Trump. It's that simple. Yeah, that's his plan, but he's not the only one who has executed this plot. I'll touch on it in a moment, but let's finish up. Quote, first they called us deplorables, then they called us Nazis, Joe Biden called us garbage. Then they said no strong and intelligent women support Trump. The Democrat Party led by Kamala Harris is an absolute disgrace as they smear American patriots who want to save our country by supporting President Donald Trump. Unquote. These are the facts you know. Trump supporters were called a basket of deplorables by Hillary Clinton. The mainstream media has slated Trump supporters bigots, either white supremacists or quote enablers of white supremacy. Old Joe called them a pile of garbage. Mark Cuban claimed that women around Trump aren't strong and intelligent, so we can also include the women who support Trump. I mean, look at all of this name calling on the left, yet they blame Trump for doing the same thing? The only difference is he doesn't attack those who support Democrats, that being the American citizens. Democrats have no problem publicly spitting in the faces of Americans and won't bat an eye while doing it. 
It's insanity. Quote, Hochul's 2022 opponent, former New York representative Lee Zeldin, blasted his old rival and mocked Harris's joy messaging. Quite the closing message from the so-called campaign of joy. If you don't vote Democrat, you are a Nazi, Hitler-loving, anti-American garbage. Zeldin massively overperformed during the 2022 midterms, losing to Hochul by just six points, in a state Biden won by a 23-point margin. Why are they mentioning old Joe? He has nothing to do with those midterm races. Who the hell cares what Biden did? It's apples and oranges, because Zeldin ran for governor of New York, not the goddamn presidency. Anywho, New York is a reliably blue state and expected to go Harris's way Tuesday night. But it is one of the most important battlegrounds for competitive down-ballot congressional races that could determine whether Republicans retain their extremely narrow House majority. Incumbent Republicans who won tight elections two years ago in New York City suburbs and further upstate are now facing well-funded Democratic opponents, attempting to associate them with Trump and red state abortion bans. Unquote. Okay, none of that matters, it was a bunch of filler. What mattered is Zeldin pointing out that the Democratic Party, with Kamala Harris, has been running on this so-called campaign of joy and unity, meanwhile Kathy Hochul is running around calling New Yorkers anti-woman, anti-American, bigots, misogynists, racists, and traitors to the country because they don't support abortion. And she's not the only one who has spewed divisive rhetoric during this very so-called campaign of joy from Kamala the android Harris. They get away with it though, because the media is 90% Democrat. And again, another Democratic governor, with a state completely destroyed by immigration. But you know, Hochul doesn't mind housing millions of immigrants, including illegals, while residents suffer under this administration. Here's some food for thought, how many Hispanic and Mexican-American women do you see out there advocating for abortion? What about Asian women? Or Native American women? Or Eastern Indian women? What about Puerto Rican women? Dominican women? Brazilian women? Democrats have a problem, and liberal black and white women can't help them. Those other women statistically, are pro-life rather than pro-choice. Especially Hispanic and Mexican-American women, they are not radicalized with feminism like black and white women have become. And the reason for this? They still hold cultural values to heart, such as tradition rooted in morality, family, and community. After the so-called offensive joke at Trump's rally, Puerto Ricans came out and brushed it off their shoulders, didn't take offense to it as much, because the joke was true. They showed their support for Trump. And guess who decided to execute damage, damage control? Control, control? Jennifer Lopez, that's right, you hurry and try to cover up the fact that most Puerto Ricans were not offended by the joke personally. Just flat out madness. But let's go back to the plot. Does anyone remember Stephanie Grisham? Probably not, let's break her down. Stephanie Grisham was a part of the Trump cabinet, press secretary, and communications director from 2019 to 2020. She was the chief of staff and press secretary to the first lady Melania Trump from 2020 to 2021. Now what's so important about Grisham? Well, let's get into it. Quote, ex-press secretary Stephanie Grisham says he mocked his supporters as basement dwellers. Trump White House Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham disavowed her former boss Tuesday evening and voiced support for Kamala Harris for president in remarks at the Democratic National Convention. In her brief speech, Grisham said that she used to be not just a Trump supporter, but also a true believer who became part of the Trump's family and spent major holidays with him. Wait, now doesn't this sound, wait for it, trumped up? Mind you, Grisham is a Republican who has flipped in supporting Kamala Harris. But let's continue. Quote, I saw him when the cameras were off, behind closed doors. Trump mocks his supporters. He calls them basement dwellers. Again, we have to keep stopping. This is a courtroom, okay. So Grisham is making a claim against Trump, right? The judge requires evidence of this claim. What does Grisham tell the judge? Your honor, I don't have any tangible proof, but he did make those statements. Case dismissed, no evidence. Quote, Grisham shared a few anecdotes about her experience working with Trump, including a story about a hospital visit he made during the Clover pandemic, and she said people were dying in the intensive care unit. Again, here comes another claim, is there any evidence of whatever the hell she is about to publicly state? Let's find out. Quote, he was mad that the cameras were not watching him. He has no empathy, no morals, and no fidelity to the truth. She is flat out lying. There is no way not a single camera wouldn't have been focusing on the goddamn president of the United States, especially Donald Trump. 
The media, being the cameramen and women, are not going to focus entirely on the suffering of the patients. They will pull away from that frequently to focus on the president's visit to the hospital. So, she's lost all credibility, which she didn't have anyway because we examined her demeanor and concluded she is just another political opportunist. Mind you, this is not a pro-Trump take, it's just about being honest. The deception is oozing through her eyes. Quote, he used to tell me, it doesn't matter what you say, Stephanie, say it enough and people will believe you. But it does matter, what you say matters, and what you don't say matters. I'm glad they put the disclaimer of these being anecdotes, because there is no way to prove any of what she's saying. Representatives for Trump's campaign did not immediately reply to a request of comment. I don't blame them, don't feed into the rhino Republican as they call them on the right. Quote, Grisham said that on January 6, 2021, she asked First Lady Melania Trump whether they could tweet out that while peaceful protest is the right of every American, there's no place for lawlessness or violence. She replied with one word, no. I became the first senior staffer to resign that day. I couldn't be part of the insanity any longer. Oh really, how long were you a part of the insanity? Mind you, wasn't you perfectly fine with a boss who was the modern-day Hitler? Oh let me guess, you didn't think he was Hitler, oh okay. But wait, previously, you were providing so-called incidents that proved that Trump was a horrible man who didn't care about the Clover patients in the hospital and didn't care about being honest. Yet you didn't resign prior to January 6th? In court, she's asked this very question. Ms. Grisham, you claim that it was during the insurrection that you decided to resign as you didn't want to be a part of the insanity any longer. Well, context being applied here, doesn't this mean you were okay with being a part of the insanity prior to that day? If you claim he had no empathy for suffering patients in the hospital, as he was only thinking of himself, you claim he has no morals or fidelity to the truth, why did you continue to work for such a horrible person? For money, recognition, you know, it's a dirty game in politics and I just want a piece of the pie. Yep, exposed in court and by the chaos sector. Melania Trump never had that conversation, because if she is calling for peaceful protest, why would she emphatically say no, or make it a point to deny tweeting out there's no place for lawlessness of violence? It's the same damn point, calling for peaceful protest obviously means Melania doesn't want lawlessness and violence, so why the hell would she not want to tweet out there's no place for lawlessness, okay I'm getting pissed off. Let's entertain the fuckery for a bit though. Quote, Grisham said she was criticized when she was press secretary because she never held a White House briefing in that role. It's because, unlike my boss, I never wanted to stand at that podium and lie. Now here I am behind a podium advocating for a Democrat, and that's because I love my country more than my party, Kamala Harris tells the truth. She respects the American people, and she has my vote. Unquote. Do I have to say it? I think everyone knows what I'm about to say. You are standing on that goddamn podium lying, how corrupt can someone be to literally stand there and lie about not lying at the podium while lying? Her pants are on fire. I'm done, someone please finish this. Yeah, she's not credible whatsoever. Just another political opportunist, choosing to side with Democrats, in attempts to keep Trump out of office. The same with Liz Cheney. But let's continue with her lies. Quote, Grisham was Trump's White House communications director and press secretary from July 2019 to April 2020, and went on to be Melania Trump's press secretary and chief of staff. In an interview with MSNBC after her remarks, Grisham said that if she can reach any undecided voters, she wants to convey that she understands what it's like to believe in Trump. But she praised Democrats for pushing a message of unity and said that people may not agree on policies, but that it's important to talk to each other like humans again." Unquote. So Democrats have not treated Trump like a human, nor the Republican Party. All gaslighting garbage. You see, this is the problem with Democrats. They have never apologized for the rhetoric against Trump, which obviously provoked the assassination attempts. In fact, within that same time frame, they went right back to attacking him. But Grisham apparently didn't care. What did she feel about Trump being treated like Hitler? Crickets. She said that the Harris campaign has been brilliant at communicating that people's freedoms are being taken away, that it's not just abortion rights, but also access to birth control. All lies. Quote, I really believe a lot of people, especially Republican women, are going to vote for Kamala, but maybe not tell their husbands. She called Trump and his running mate short-sighted and misogynistic. Oh, but she had no problem being employed by this short-sighted and misogynistic man. This is how opportunists slither around. From 2019 to 2020, Grisham was publicly praising Trump as she had appeared on several news outlets. 
Keep in mind, Trump had already been slated the modern Hitler by this time. She didn't see it that way, of course. Then, during the election, which was obviously rigged, and even the so-called insurrection was exposed as having fake Trump supporters present, causing the chaos, Grisham comes out and claims she would be resigning because she no longer wanted to be a part of the insanity. Like the wind just swirls in every direction. Quote, soon after January 6th, Grisham distanced herself from Trump world, and she eventually cooperated with the House committee that investigated the insurrection. Oh, really, I see the plot. Grisham distanced herself from Trump by that time, as she had stopped being the communications director and press secretary in April of 2020. But she was still Melania Trump's press secretary up until January 6th. Mind you, she claimed that she tried to convince Melania to send out that tweet. What we have here is someone who was sent to spy on the Trump administration, getting very close to snoop around. The so-called insurrection was provoked by fake Trump supporters being Antifa and BLM rioters. It's already been exposed. In fact, Nancy Pelosi came out and took responsibility for not making sure the Capitol was secure. Trump contacted Pelosi about sending the National Guard, and she denied it, claimed that it was, quote, too late. But that's just half of the problem. There is also video footage of Capitol Police literally standing by as individuals were running around in the building. Now, it is a public building, but not every area is public. And those individuals ransacking Pelosi's office were allowed to get into that area because it wasn't a mob, there were only a few people in the office. So that tells you that Nancy Pelosi not only allowed it, but conspired to make it appear it was Trump's fault. If you recall, wacky Congress member Jamal Bowman pulled a fire alarm to prevent a bill from being passed and then claimed he thought it was a device to open the door. Yeah, it's insane. And even when it was revealed in surveillance that he flipped the sign on the entrance from open to closed, then proceeded to pull the fire alarm, Bowman still refused to admit he committed a crime. Now, as we mentioned when covering that incident, this is a Congress member plotting within the building and causing hysteria as many would assume there is a fire or an emergency. This type of malicious behavior justifies the theory that the so-called insurrection was plotted by Democrats. They're very clever, but only at face value. Quote, in October 2021, Grisham said on NBC News that she tried to resign from the White House a couple of times, but Melania Trump persuaded her to stay. Yeah, right. In fact, I had a resignation letter written out with some very specific points in it that I was ready to hand over at any moment. January 6th, of course, was my breaking point. And I was really proud that I was, well, the first in the administration to resign. Unquote. Just a bunch of garbage. These are the people Trump refers to, individuals that are not genuinely a part of his administration. Rather, they're there to infiltrate and conspire against him. We can say the same for Democrats, independents, and other third parties. There are always spies slithering around, trying to destroy whatever progress is being made or proposed. She's just another spy paid off to stab Trump in the back. Grisham is an opportunist, nothing more, nothing less. In fact, I would even suggest she was sent to be eye candy, attempting to seduce Trump. We all know he has a soft spot for the ladies. Speaking of that, Grisham also claimed that Trump sexually harassed other female staff. All lies, no evidence, just defamation of character. Look at this screenshot of a video. It's titled, Grisham recalls when Trump taught her a method of lying. Yeah, you're lying right there, claiming he taught you a method of lying. She claimed that she tried to resign a couple of times prior to January 6th. Oh, really? What stopped you? Well, in an interview with Chuck Todd, on NBC. He asked her that very question. She claimed that Melania Trump asked her to stay. Oh, okay, but when she stated that part, her eyes shifted to the left. Now, the left side of the brain deals with analytics, computing, and such. But liars utilize the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is the top left region of the brain. It is associated with the ability to generate deception. In other words, a lie. Look at those eyes. Those are the eyes of a mentally disturbed individual. Her pupils are not dilated, but her expression is a bit excited. This happens when you're perhaps on drugs such as opioids, narcotics, or even heroin. I believe this woman is on drugs. She may have not been during her time as press secretary, but when the conspirators came to her with a plan, she started using drugs. I mean, keep in mind, she is publicly deceiving the public about the President of the United States.
If you're not just a flat out corrupt individual, there will be tremendous amounts of stress for complying with the conspiracy to prevent Trump from exposing the truth about the prior election. This leads to drug use or heavy drinking one or the other, or maybe even both. Now she's endorsing Kamala Harris, and you want to know why? Because everything the left is doing is cunningly plotted to slander and discredit. They're cowards when it comes to a challenge direct and straightforward. Rather, they slither around in the shadows plotting up sinister schemes. Let me elaborate. Democrats wanted to slander Trump's image with women. So when it's election time, they have an effective strategy in discouraging women to support him. Think about it. All of the sexual assault allegations lead to a reputation of being a misogynist, bigot, lacking respect for women, and such. So, of course, it will impact the votes from women in the presidential election. Not all, of course, but enough to generate a 12 to 15 point lead for Democrats from Hillary Clinton to Kamala Harris. And it also affects the votes for Republicans in general, as the party is seen as anti-woman, anti-abortion, anti-America, like the wacko Kathy Hochul suggest. This is how they manipulate voters, predominantly women, race, gender. Democrats use this political elements to push the propaganda. They called Trump Hitler racism? Check. They claimed he sexually assaulted women. Grabbed them by the you know what? Check. But once again, all of this was never exposed before Trump ran for president, right? So the Hitler was one of the most popular men in America and also one of the most popular sexual abusers in America. Well, I'll give a Democrat a thousand bucks if they can make sense of that. They can't because it was used politically, not a genuine concern of the so-called racism and even the victims of sexual assault. For instance, there have been 16 women who have come forward claiming Trump sexually assaulted them when he became a politician. Quote, 16 women have come forward with allegations against President Donald Trump, each accusing him of inappropriate conduct. The most recent, from writer and columnist Jean Carroll, appeared in a New York magazine on Friday. The women's charges range from unwanted touches and aggressive, sudden kissing, to the latest accusation against Trump that he attacked a woman in a dressing room and forced his penis inside her. Wow, so Jean Carroll claimed this happened. Yet when he was a billionaire businessman, which she could have broke the bank with a lawsuit prior, she decided to come out now that he's running for president? Oh, okay, that makes all the sense in the world. Because it's political, meaning Jean Carroll was not concerned about the so-called sexual assault when Trump was a businessman. I don't believe it actually happened to be honest, but it was a slander to sway women voters away from supporting Trump. 16 women have accused Donald Trump of various forms of sexual assault, including one accusation of rape, and another in which the accuser has not used the word rape, but whose description meets the legal definition of rape. This figure includes standing accusations from both before and after the release of the Access Hollywood tape on October 7, 2016. Oh yes, right in the thick of an election cycle. For other women have publicly said Mr. Trump walked in on them, and other pageant contestants while they were undressing. BuzzFeed reports another three women have confirmed the pageant stories, but did not want their names used. The alleged incidents range from the early 1980s to 2013. Donald Trump has adamantly denied all of the stories and accuses the women of being political tools who were trying to undermine either his candidacy or presidency. Now some may assume Trump, well, gets a little too friendly with women and that's fair. But what about the women in these circumstances? Were they being flirtatious? Were they consenting to the flirting? Did they admire Trump, as he was a wealthy and popular businessman? Because even though a married man would flirt with another woman, if she consents to that flirting knowing he is a married man, she can't then criticize him for being unfaithful. A woman who consents to sexual offers, gestures, physical touching, because she also enjoys it, can't then turn around and claim she was sexually assaulted. There are scenarios where a woman complies, out of fear. Yes, this happens quite often. But since this is involving a wealthy man, who has become a politician in the Republican Party, we have to point out the contradiction, or lack of concern if Trump were a Democrat. We can come to the logical conclusion that these same women wouldn't have come out if Trump was a Democrat. And you see, that makes this seem illegitimate, right? Because the same with the alleged racism, you can't charge someone with a crime on one side and not the other. There are many factors to claims of sexual assault, especially when it involves a public figure. 
But the reason we see that it was politically motivated is because all of those allegations came out. Guess when? In 2016, the same year Trump ran for president. Let's look at the list of women who all of a sudden felt it was necessary to speak out, even though the alleged incidents happened 10 to 20 plus years prior. Kristen Anderson, early 1990s. Story in the Washington Post on October 14, 2016. Anderson says she was in a Manhattan bar with friends when the person next to her reached up her skirt and touched her vagina through her underwear. She says she turned and recognized the person as Donald Trump. Oh, okay, so somehow Trump, who was one of the most famous people in the world, just covertly snuck up alongside this woman without the bar being flooded with paparazzi and people recognizing him? If you say so. Jean Carroll, late 1995 or early 1996. Story in New York Magazine June of this year and expected an upcoming book. Carol describes running into Trump in a department store, where she says he recognized her for her widely read advice column. Carol says they went into a dressing room after Trump asked for her advice on a present lingerie for another woman. Inside, she alleges that he shoved her against a wall, quote, forcing his fingers around my private, thrust his penis halfway, or completely, I'm not certain, inside me. Unquote. A senior White House official issued a statement to New York Magazine, calling the accusation a completely false and unrealistic story. So Trump is running around doing this? I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I think these women were into it if it did happen. Now they're trying to attack him politically to lock in the women vote for Democrats, which is an insult to the women who actually are victims of sexual assault and rape. Rachel Crooks, 2005. Story in the New York Times on October 2016. A 22-year-old receptionist at the time, Crooks said Trump gave her an unwanted kiss on the mouth after meeting him in 2005. Wait, there aren't any other details of this incident? Where did you meet him? What was the event or the scenario? Jane Doe, a.k.a. Katie Johnson, 1994. Wait, so this woman is using a typical alias for another name that is also used as an alias? Whatever. Lawsuit filed June 2016, refiled October 2016, as reported by BuzzFeed and others, then dropped in November 2016. Jane Doe is an unnamed plaintiff, who has also gone by Katie Johnson in legal papers. She claims she was repeatedly raped by Trump and Jeffrey Epstein at Epstein's New York City apartment in 1994, when she was 13 years old. A witness, also given a pseudonym, Tiffany Doe, said she recruited Jane Doe and others. Wait, recruited? For sex trafficking minors? Shouldn't this person be in jail? I think I know who this is and they are creating a fake person to cover up this person. This is Ghislaine Maxwell, yep, it's exactly what she was doing, trafficking minors for Epstein. They are trying to link Trump to those crimes. Doe, using the name Johnson, gave an interview to the Daily Mail, in which she said she did not know who Trump was at the time of the alleged attack, but identified him later when she saw him on television. It is not known why she withdrew the lawsuit. She has spoken publicly or withdrawn her rape allegations since then. What? She was committing crimes herself, right? It clearly states that Tiffany Doe recruited Katie Johnson. She recruited Katie Johnson, who was 13 years old, for sex trafficking. So in the attempts to slander Trump's image, this woman is revealing she was involved in sex trafficking and somehow hasn't been charged with a crime? Bunkers. Jessica Drake, 2006. Story made public at a news conference October 2016. While working as an adult film actress, Drake says Trump invited her to the room where he was stating in Lake Tahoe. In the room, she says he grabbed, hugged and kissed her, and two other women who accompanied her without her permission. Later, she alleges that Trump called her and pressed her to return to his room, offering $10,000 at one point. Drake says she declined. Don't believe it, I think it's the other way around, she tried to seduce Trump and he declined. Jill Harth, 1992-1993. Story in the New York Times, October 2016 a Florida businesswoman who partnered with Trump and later dated him. Harth alleged that he groped her under the table at dinner with her boyfriend, then repeatedly got her alone, and it would turn into a quote, wrestling match, unquote. She sued Trump for breach of contract, sexual harassment, and at one point attempted to rape. She settled and then in 1998, dated Trump. Bonkers, none of it makes sense. Kathy Heller, 1997. Story in The Guardian October 2016. At a Mother's Day brunch for Mar-a-Lago club members' families in 1997, Heller alleges that when she was introduced to Trump, he grabbed her and tried to kiss her on the lips. Heller says she leaned back to avoid him, and then he kissed her on the side of the mouth. CNN has reported Heller is a Democratic donor. Yep, there's your culprits of the political hit job. Nini Laksunen, 2006. Former Miss Finland. Story in Ilta Sanomat in October 2016. In English in the Telegraph. Laksunen told Finnish newspaper Ilta Sanomat that Trump, quote, squeezed her butt as she and other pageant contestants stood next to him for a public photo, not that important until 2016, I guess. Jessica Leeds, early 1980s. Story in the New York Times, October 2016. If you noticed, all of these stories are presented by left-wing rags. 
Lead says she sat next to Trump in first class, on an airplane and that he kissed her, groped her chest, and reached up her skirt, leading her to move back to coach. Quote, he was like an octopus, unquote. In a New York Post report published October of 2016, a British man whose interview was arranged by the Trump campaign, said that he was on the flight, that Leeds' account is false and he remembers Leeds acting inappropriately. Sounds about right, women trying to be clingy and clout chasers, then when they are rejected, all of a sudden Trump gropes her. Mindy McGillivray, 2003. Story in Palm Beach post-October 2016. Working as an assistant to photographers at a mar lago in 2003, McGillivray charges that Trump nudged or grabbed her from behind. Sounds like a fake name to me. Jennifer Murphy, 2004. Story in the Grazia on October 2016. A former Miss USA and The Apprentice contestant, Grazia says that Trump kissed her on the lips after walking her to the elevators following a meeting in New York, which he said was to discuss a possible job. Cassandra Searles, 2013. Made story public in Facebook post early 2016. Miss Washington 2013, Searles wrote on Facebook, quote, he probably doesn't want me telling this story about that time he continually grabbed my ass and invited me to his hotel room, unquote. Did you go to the room? Why isn't there any details about this alleged incident? Surely the Facebook post included more details, you know, such as him grabbing your ass, inviting you to his hotel room, and then you either declined or agreed or wasn't sure what to do, you see. Because she doesn't want to look like a groupie. Defeats the purpose of the claim. Natasha Stoinoff, 2005. Story on People.com October 2016. Stoinoff was a celebrity reporter covering Trump for People magazine. She alleges that Trump assaulted her while she was at Mar-a-Lago, interviewing him and Melania Trump for a story about their one-year anniversary. She alleges Trump took her to a private room, pushed her against the wall and aggressively kissed her. Stoinoff also says a staffer told her Trump was waiting for her the next day at a massage appointment. Wow, Trump had the hots for a reporter, surely she can write a story about it at People. Temple Taggart McDowell, 1997. Story in the New York Times, May 2016. McDowell, who was Miss Utah USA 1997, charges that Trump suddenly kissed her without her consent on two separate occasions. Can you provide details? Negative. Karina Virginia, 1998. Story made public at a news conference October 2016. Virginia says that while she was waiting for a ride following the U.S. Open tennis tournament, Trump walked up to her, grabbed her arm, and touched her breast. Yep, right out in the open for everyone to see, I guess. Summer Service, 2007. Story made public in a news conference October 2016. A former contestant on The Apprentice, Zervis alleges that Trump told her he wanted to discuss a possible job, but alone in a Beverly Hills hotel bungalow. Grabbed her breasts, kissed her, and tried to lead her into a bedroom. Now here's the key issue. A woman is sexually assaulted by Trump, word gets out that he's a creep, and every woman knows that it's best to not involve themselves with such a man, because he may sexually assault them, right? So how do you end up with so many women having these claims, when not only did they know Trump as one of the most famous wealthy businessmen, but also a wealthy businessman who will potentially rape them? Oh, you know, never mind that, those prior 10 women who were claiming he was fondling them, that's just hearsay, I have no problem interacting with him on a personal level. And he's a freaking billionaire, I mean I would be a fool not to take advantage of this opportunity to make easy money. So I'll let him grab me by the, uh, private parts. I give him what he wants, and he gives me what I want. He gets to fondle me, I kinda like it anyway, but I get what I want in return, a lot of money and infamy as one of his mistresses. The larger number of women making accusations against Trump, the likelihood they were complicit with everything he allegedly proposed to them. The smaller number of women making accusations, the likelihood that it may be true. You understand? The larger number indicates that these women well obviously knew who Trump was. But they also had knowledge of incidents which gossip spread about him in those social circles. Now either they were complicit with it, or they were trying to bring him down by presenting themselves as eye candy. If someone is creeping around forcing themselves on women, at such a rate as this, despite a fear of coming out publicly, within those circles those women would know about this creeper. And that creeper is one of the world's richest men. So it becomes a situation where either they disregard the previous victims of sexual assault for their own personal gain, or they are conspiring to collect evidence against him and bring his business down. But again, that conspiracy would have happened already. All of these accounts never came about prior to Trump running for president in 2016. And guess who his opponent was, that's right, a woman in Hillary Clinton. Democrats tried to slander his image so much that independent women and even some Republican women would choose to vote for Hillary Clinton. Didn't work out, then Hillary Clinton claimed his victory was a Russian conspiracy. You see, the Democrats are slick, but not slick enough, they need more WD-40. All of those women were basically clout chasers for one, when they interacted with Trump, then were hired as political operatives for the Hillary Clinton campaign in attempts to sway non-democratic women voters. It's so obvious. 
Now, we do have to mention the Access Hollywood tape, as it was used to justify these prior claims. In that unaired footage, Trump is discussing with Billy Bush how he is drawn to attractive women. Of course, this is a conversation between guys, and they're gonna mention the physical bodies of attractive women, just like women have conversations about attractive men. It's a two-way street. But Trump made the viral statement, of course, about grabbing women by their vaginas, which was offensive. Yet, has he been arrested and charged for any sexual assault crimes? No, he hasn't. The language is unacceptable, of course, and it is a characteristic of a sexual assaulter, but he hasn't been arrested and charged for these crimes, yet there are tons of claims. And it's because those women, including additional beauty pageant contestants, admired Trump, and some even were turned on by him, which obviously meant they engaged with Trump on some flirtatious level. He definitely isn't perfect, we all know that. And we can even say that in his billionaire days, Trump may have been a bit too much of a ladies' man, getting himself in trouble. But the women that have accused him of these sexual assault charges were more than likely in his presence for that very reason, to seduce him into flirting with them. Powerful men are usually brought down by sex scandals. Some are of their own doing, others are somewhat coincidental, while others are carefully plotted up in the shadows to take that successful man down. You have to think, as bold and brass as Trump is, there were other powerful men who didn't like him. He was known to be flirty, so the best way to take him down a notch is attempt to have him entangled in scandals involving women. Again I reiterate, this is not a justification for this promiscuous behavior, but there is no way that 16 women came out in 2016, all claiming Trump sexually assaulted them. Donald Trump the Democratic presidential candidate? None of these women would have come forward with anything. Donald Trump the Republican presidential candidate? All hell has broken loose, women from the early 1980s has come forward with sexual assault claims. The political divide here is a slap in the face of women who have been victims of sexual assault. If you're not calling it out when Trump is a Democrat, then we have to assume it never happened, you know? Exactly. Now we can say that Trump may have, quote, dabbled a bit with some of those women, but nobody seemed to care when Trump was a registered Democrat. And you see, that is the contradiction which, like mentioned, overshadows women who are victims of sexual assault or harassment. The Access Hollywood tapes, again, it was unreleased. Nobody knew about that audio until 2016. So this means Access Hollywood had this audio and whoever leaked it to the Clinton campaign didn't feel it was important to share that graphic and offensive language during the time frame it happened, which was in the 90s. And what about The View? Joy Behar? What about Whoopi Goldberg? They absolutely adored Trump as long as he was a Democrat. Same character, same outspoken New York personality, and all of those allegations, well, apparently The View host never knew about it, Negative if it happened that is right up their alley, a bunch of gossip and scandals. They never talked about it because it either never happened or those women were basically groupies, which, you know, not much defense when your goal is to literally be available for sexual favors to obtain some sort of financial gain and recognition. Now, this episode was recorded prior to the election. And let's just say the tactic to pit women against Trump has failed. Women love strong men and what they see in Trump is a strong man which translates to a strong leader. The moral of this political story is sure a president can be rough around the edges. Heck, might even have a bit of a shaky past. But the president is a figurehead of the nation. They represent the people and relate to the people. And we all know people are far from perfect. Can't expect the leader of a nation to be perfect, neither. They're human just like everyone else. Democrats project this pseudo-intellectual, politically correct persona as if they are the more sophisticated party which practices decorum on a daily basis. Well, not sure how sophisticated and politically correct you can be if you advocate for abortion, advocate for six foot five, 240 pound hairy men claiming to be women, and bulldozing some five foot eight, 160 pound female Olympic boxer, or just power swimming to breaking records against women or invading the feminine spaces in the locker rooms, including universities, high school, middle school, and it's even crept into elementary recreational activities. What about allowing drag queens into those elementaries, appearing as ghouls and goblins, the very scary images that children have nightmares about? Oh, that's not traumatizing to children. Or what about Maya Kobabe distributing child pornographic novels to school libraries? This sickness is all from the left they are not sophisticated. Democrats pretend to be the moral superior party from the rhetoric, as many of them are pseudo-intellectuals. So to many who can't decipher through 
The pseudo-intellectualism when they speak or have debates, they sound sophisticated to those deaf ears. But the character of the Democratic Party, at least over the last 20 years, has become more and more perverse and twisted. So, uh, how many times has old Joe been targeted by the Republican Party? I'll wait. Racism, sexism, sexual assault charges, blabbering buffoon, Hitler, dictator, existential threat to democracy, traitor to the United States, threatens women's rights, discredited for his 2016 presidential win, tried to impeach him twice, attempted assassination by government agents, another attempt by the CIA and FBI, conspiring with Iran, and then another incident which was also an attempt, although no evidence showed a direct attack or target towards Trump. This man has been through the ringer and is still here, having the courage to keep fighting. And Democrats are hurt more than anything. The same with Holly Weird. This same man would have been a political goldmine for Democrats come election time. They knew it and, well, they blew it. The far left ideology is what sunk their ship and Kamala Harris was the final leak that brought in the most water. We will return with our analysis of the election, of course, but as we stated prior, no matter who would have won, get prepared for the expected unexpected. This is the chaos sector.